Hi everyone, my name is Mark Mason. My pronouns are they, them. Um, and I just want to acknowledge, especially in light of everything that we're dealing with, an acknowledgement that we are on occupied lands. Uh, and we are, we are here but by grace, right? So uh, with that, I want to talk today about the many faces of judging, uh, reflecting on yourself and on others within the judge program. If we have some objectives today, they start with preparing for the panel discussion which is why you have folded segments of paper and pens. So during the panel, there's going to be discussions about scorekeeping and stage work. There's going to be event management. There's going to be rules gurus bringing out all of the CR, MTR, and other documents. And finally, there's going to be mentorship. So as you observe this presentation, ideally in reasonable silence, please think of questions you want to address to those people. Your questions may be anonymous. However, your questions should identify either which speaker or which subject you're asking about, be that mentorship, rules, stage, um, scorekeeping, or event management. So we're going to re re explore what we do per the magic tournament rules. How many people knew that in that document it says things like what the head judge roles are and what the TO roles are? Great, a lot of hands. We're gonna dive into those documents because I don't know about you, but some of those documents I haven't read as much over the last two years as I had over the previous two years. Anyone can relate to that? Yeah, fewer events and everything. Number two or three, we're going to discover the not so secret truth about your place in the judge program. And then we're going to break into triads and do a quick turbo workshop. And then finally, I will collect these questions as you are in your triads for our panel. So per the, oh, to prepare for that panel instruction, do you have papers and pens? Does anyone need some? Great. Write those down. Identify the people you want them to go to. Now, what do we do per the magic tournament rules, the MTR document, which by the way, is also a document we ask players to read, right? So this is also setting up player expectations from us when they see us at events. So what are the TO or tournament organizer responsibilities per the MTR? I'm big into participation. So by all means, raise hands if that makes you most comfortable or shout out answers if you feel that you know them with some authority. Right, the venue. Sorry. Provide a venue. Thank you. Absolutely, Joel. Any, anything else? Per the MTR? Yeah, it's on my phone. I haven't looked at it too much. Well, that's good. That's why we're reviewing it. Let's take a look. So here's what the MTR says. The first one, in fact, is to secure a venue. They sanction the event. They promote the event, according to the MTR. These are the bullet points you'll actually see right in the document. They staff the event, they report results and save slips. By the way, are we saving <laughs> slips anymore? Is that a thing we do anymore? What does, mean? I mean, we did what does it even mean? <laughs> yeah, it used to be seven months, right? Yeah. No, seven years. Seven year. years, oh my gosh. Like I, I, I evidently was Snow White, getting rid of these seven dwarves after seven months. And then finally, we, they supply the event. If the event requires product, Someone has to be responsible for that. These are the TO duties per the MTR. Now, as you look at this, is there anything that we know that TOs also do that just isn't in this document? Have anyone ever been a TO, for example, and put on tournaments? You do more than these six things. I promise you. I promise you. So, what are the head judge responsibilities per the MTR? Anyone? They do opening announcements. Do opening announcements? Is that per the MTR? Not to my knowledge. No, it is not. <laughs> but they do. They do, which is a key point, right? We do more than the documents say, which is why I'm inviting this reflection of who do you want to be in the judge program? How do you want to be understood? Do you want to have a judge brand? And what can that be? Any other guesses as to what's in the MTR? Handle, Joel? handle appeals. Handle appeals is absolutely in the MTR. Any other ones? Anyone, anyone? Okay, let's look. So here's what it says. The MTR says number one, they handle those banana appeals, right? When they come up, slippery situations. By the way, when you're doing an appeal, guess what you might have to do as a head judge? You might have to overturn a floor judge. Very, very important moment in terms of how you're setting 
both uh, a, a ward of protection around your judges, but also a ward of protection around a player's experience, right? They deserve to have a game with rulings that are correct, or as correct as possible. How about this? They ensure fair and correct gameplay. That's their responsibility per the MTR. Like this is, this is where the buck stops, is with the head judge. Also bulleted points. They coordinate and delegate responsibilities. So this is really important. Is a head judge's primary job to be the person running from table to table making everything get done? Not according to our documents, right? So this is a leadership kind of role and skill where you need to be able to say, hey, can you help me with this responsibility? We've got pairings that go up. I need them pulled down about you know, when there's maybe 15 minutes left on the clock. Can you do that for me? And, and be able to delegate those responsibilities. What else does it say? It says that they can do temporary transfers of their power. What happens if I, as the head judge, need to go to the bathroom or have to have a, a food break because maybe I'm having like, you know, some response to a lack of sugar? I gotta be able to transfer that power to somebody. This is huge. Not only, so let me also point out, if you do this kind of a transfer, you ought to communicate it to key people so they know where to go and they're not just wondering, where are you, head judge? Where are you? We, 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 the other part is, do you think it, you think you have to have a smart person to hand this, to hand this power off to? Or should you hand it over to a brand new minted L1? Right, so you, you, and I think Libby's gonna be talking about how you put together a team. And that's gonna be something you should think about if you're a head judge, is like, who could I delegate these powers to when and why? And that's what, that's what, uh, that's what the MTR says. Anyone know that head judges do more than this? <laughs> Right, Wait, our documents are almost like, it's almost like the lowest bar, right? This is, this is just what the documents say are our are, are, are locus of control, our areas of excellence. But we do a lot more than that. How many people have ever had a head judge mentor them? By a show of hands? Only five people have been mentored in this room by a head judge? Oh, okay, more, more than five. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, what are a floor judge's responsibilities per the MTR? And this is a trick question. How many bullets are in the document for floor judges? Anyone know? Zero. Precisely zero! <laughs> there are exactly zero bulleted points. Now there are some items that are still, still listed within the document, but they're not listed as bulleted points like the other roles and responsibilities. For example, we are also to ensure fair, correct gameplay, and we are to do translation if possible. If we can accommodate a player who's asked hey, my, my native language of choice is this, can I get a judge uh, here who can do it? If we can accommodate them, this is something. Now, if you're thinking about, how do I want to get staff to big events? Has anyone considered mentioning that you're bilingual or trilingual? Now, this is literally right out of the MTR. It's a clue. It's a clue. You pay two men a crack it and draw a card. When you pay attention to what's in the document, you get that benefit of wisdom and opportunity. And then it also says, and I like to say here, you don't need a reason to help people, but we assist with reasonable requests. Reasonable requests. If you're at an event, it's just you and a floor judge, and that floor judge is being asked to help somebody shuffle every time they shuffle and the game is legacy, that may not be a reasonable request. That may not be a reasonable request, even if there are some, some challenges around that physical dexterity. But where there's reasonable requests, we are there to assist. So if somebody says, hey, judge, could you watch my opponent for slow play? Now we might sit and watch a game of magic for some period of time to either make that assessment or perhaps even just by our presence being there, maybe some slow play that might have been in play has now gone out of play, right? It has gone to the exile zone, thanks to your mere assisting with reasonable requests. All right, so the MTR also does say that scorekeepers have a responsibility. Any guesses what scorekeepers' responsibilities are? Submit results. Keeping score. Keeping score. Uh, report results, did you say? Report or submit results, I don't Report or submit results. Any others? They track penalties, right? Track penalties? Well, let's see if the MTR says they do that. <laughs> Any others? All right, here's what the MTR says. Scorekeepers, our responsibilities are to generate pairings and enter results. Generate, see our lovely wine pairings with our various forms of protein here? That is absolutely the scorekeeper's responsibilities. 
um, they have to literally repair problems. <laughs> literally repair. Uh, if a person has entered a result wrong and that's caught early on, and you're a floor judge and you hear that, I suggest you take those players up to the scorekeeper, walk with them, because we're probably going to be repairing two tables, right? And when you get a table number from that scorekeeper, oh, you, you, you grimaced. Why did you grimace, Abe? Is it sometimes more than two tables? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Because can we do this right now in the companion app? No, 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 no. But the good news is, if we are using the companion app, the event is probably sized in such a way that we could make the accommodation of saying to everyone, everyone stop playing Magic. We're going to repair this round. Uh, good news is, depending on if you're using other software, this is the least you might have to do is repair two tables, right? Who's heard of a cascading repair? Who's heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, how many players could that involve? Well, it depends. Did you two play each other in a previous round? Is this round seven <laughs> that we're repairing? Because there's a lot more opportunities to cascade. Cascading repair just means we can't just take the correct winner and put them in the previous slot they were in and the correct loser of that match and put them in the other table because maybe they played each other already and we don't want that. So then we have to continue to break. According to a set of rules, it is a secret ritual that uh, scorekeepers know how to do and perform. They do it, they, they first are inducted into it in the full moon with a silver dagger. I mean, it's a great step. But if you, get, if you get a chance to learn these skills, they're highly valuable, which is why being a scorekeeper, just like being a head judge, is a premier position that TOs often staff well in advance. And they make sure they have the, the cream of the crop and the best of the best. We also generate standings before and after the last round of Swiss. We generate standings before and after. And how many people know when we generate that list of standings, is it immediately finalized? No, right? We're going to give them some amount of time. But when, when that time has expired, as the head judge determines, then those standings stand. And then they do submit results. You got, you got two of them, Joel. And here's another thing they do, according to the MTR. They work with the head judge. How many people knew that when it comes even to things like repairing problems, the head judge is still the ultimate authority. <laughs> the head judge is the ultimate authority. Now, I bring this up for a few reasons. How many people have been a head judge or would like to be a head judge? Put your hands up. Hi. Excellent. Let me share something with you. When you are the head judge, you could say, magic players, I am your head judge. And for, because of that, for today, there will be no islands allowed in a game of magic. We will allow no islands. Now, I share that with you, not to impress you about the power that a head judge could have, but to impress upon you how much you could screw up the game by not taking this role seriously, not doing your homework on the front end. This is a high level of responsibility. It is not power for power's sake, right? To, to corrupt us to the point where the game is almost unrecognizable. So, the scorekeeper has the responsibility of working with and communicating with the head judge about these problems, and still the head judge fundamentally has those final decisions. It's really not the scorekeeper who gets to decide exactly how far we're going to do this, although most head judges will have a deep trust with their scorekeeper and will largely allow this to happen. But it's also important because what if, what if you're a new scorekeeper who maybe could do a simple repair, but haven't done a cascading yet. Or you haven't done, who knows what the Seattle Shuffle is? Anyone? Who knows that? Sean, what's the Seattle Shuffle? Uh, what we had to do last at the <laughs> event. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, when a uh, delayed repair is the, what I hear it called most mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, so like, and then since the top eight was running super late and they were in the main event as well with two buys, so we had to wait for the main event. The main event. So, oh no, that was it. So yeah, so what, sometimes you have a room full of results that are in, but you've got a table that still has a very large time extension. Now what you can do is just enter a result for that match, run that pairings for the next round, and you go to the table where those two players that are still finishing their match, and they're playing right now while you're doing all this, they're still playing because their time is counting down. 
You go to those two tables and you say, hey, your opponent's going to join you later. When they do, we're going to make sure you have a full time extension. Uh, and it may, it may be oh, quite a while. Feel free even to you know, take a break or something, but, but be back soon. And you're going to go to the other table. Another judge, ideally, you've delegated to go to the other table. They're going to say the same thing. And what's cool is you could sometimes have a table that had like a 23 minute time extension still counting down at the point that we are where we're ready to repair. And maybe by virtue of, 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 of entering that result and then changing it if you need to, because sometimes you'll have to change it, you may not have guessed right, in which case then just the other people go to those tables. You may be able to make that time extension basically disappear or vanish by the next round. That's the Seattle Shuffle. And that's something, uh, uh, you know, a scorekeeper ought not do on their own. <laughs> that is still going to be fundamentally a head judge determination. So this is what the MTR tells us. And I asked that same question we've asked throughout. Was anything missing from your experience? Have you ever done anything <laughs> in any of these roles that weren't listed? I have. Who else? Yeah, exactly. So this is the not-so-secret truth. The not-so-secret truth is while the MTR document says what is your responsibilities, your ability to be responsible for even more is not only expected, it's encouraged. And every one of those areas that I listed, plus every other idea you have in your mind of things that you've done as a judge, can be a brand envelope, can be an area of expertise, can be the specialized knowledge skills and abilities that you bring to an event such that people say, or as Libby might say in the final presentation, that's a judge I want staffed because they've got the magic for the gathering. Okay, so how about people from their own experience? What things weren't listed, maybe even that you do think about yourself, that are something you do as a judge? Anyone? Pushing chairs. Pushing chairs. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. Something that matters to me is when I see L2 judges and above still pushing chairs. Because there is not a job to make this event go well that is beneath any of us, ever. So yes, pushing chairs. Now, if you think about pushing in chairs, if you made that your brand, right? How many people recognize that that might not be the most shining example of something we could do? It counts. It matters. But if that's the best thing you can do, you may want to rethink. <laughs> now, yeah, you could rethink it. What if you turned making a clean, safe play environment part of your customer service perspective? Right? Did we see customer service anywhere on here? Was the words customer service? Now, there was stuff about being fair and making sure the event went correctly, but nothing about people feeling good at the end. Every magic tournament I've been to, let me share something. And the only reason I do Every magic tournament I've been to, there are more players who do not win than win. Yeah, there are more players who do not end up in top eight than end up in top eight. <laughs> yeah. But when I am a head judge, I want everyone at that event to have a top eight experience. Yeah. I want them to feel as if they won by showing up. And so customer service is key. What are some other things? Anything else somebody wants to say about their own experiences from here? <laughs> Yes. Oh, can I tell on you? You do mentorship. I've watched you do mentorship at events. It's nowhere on this list, right? Was there a bullet point that said mentoring others? There was delegation. You might have to teach somebody a skill in order to delegate it. Yes, you're ready now? Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Minor conflict resolution, not, not to you involved. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Being able to de-escalate a situation before the TO is needed, right? And I also, from Baldi's standpoint, I could tell on you, I mean, investigation skills. These are skills that are beyond those bullet points. It's part of keeping the game fair, but it's not listed, right? <laughs> That's really important. So think about these things, especially the things that aren't listed, that make you unique and special and a part of a team that you would want to be a part of, that you know would attract others to be a part of. Okay, so that not so secret truth is why when it comes to what we do, is we do a lot. We do a lot. In fact, we do a lot more than what was listed and it's, and it's in everything that we do. Um, 
if our goal is to give correct rulings, what is something we might do if we're unsure while we're taking a call? What is something we might do? Check our phones. Go, what was it, Joel? Sorry, check our phones. Check your phones, yeah. What is something else we might do? Speak to another judge who might have that answer. Speak to another judge who might have that answer. What else might we do? Pre-qualify what you're going to say. Yeah, be ready with a script, right? You know that, that I hear a lot of judges say, "I believe uh, I am I am fairly certain on what we're going to do with this ruling, but from time to time things change, so I just want to confirm this with someone else." Being ready with that that creates confidence. I, Study before the event. Study before the event, right? Show up ready to judge <laughs> by by doing those things. Exactly. None of those things again were listed. Except to the degree that it says we're supposed to have a fair and, and, and accurate event, right? Like it's implied, but not listed. All right, so finding your place. I'm going to suggest to you that there are some quadrants you can be thinking about. So what we have is we have hard skills up at the top, and we have soft skills down at the bottom. And we have, and I'm going to kind of define these terms, I'm calling it event-based which means it's the whole picture. Almost think more like, like a, like a multi-day Grand Prix, right? Or a magic fest. That to me is the event. As opposed to, or as differentiated from, the game base, which I'm calling, you know, like, pauper event at this hour, I'm calling event-based. The fact that there's a whole schedule of sides would be, I'm sorry, that would be game-based, the pauper, Whereas the whole schedule of side events would fall under event-based, okay? So what I would suggest that we have is in the hard event space space, we have the core idea of logistics, all right? This is how do we do it so that one person to 100 people to 1,000 people can go from where they need to go, arriving at the event, to get where they need to be to be playing and then throughout, and frankly, quite, quite literally, this is also how we make sure that TOs are able to get the value out of those bodies that have shown up. So what are we doing after they've gone zero, four, right? What are we doing even after that? Those are logistic questions. This is where do we put the parents? This is where do we, yes? Oh, I thought you had a question there, <laughs> or comment. Um, this is all of the stuff that is often quite invisible to players, and it's often quite invisible to judges even the first time that they're there. It's just how we do it. I remember a great story. Clint Heron is an L2 from Ohio, and Clint was at an event, one of the first, I think, uh, Magic Fest that, that he was staffed at. And Meg Baum was doing what leaders do, which is delegating responsibilities, and said to Clint, can you go put tape loops up on those banners in that area and then this way? And Clint said, absolutely I can, and began rushing off. And then Clint came back and said, what's a tape loop? <laughs> and that's a really also important part is to understand sometimes we have a way that we do it here, what we've become so familiar with, we don't know that we haven't replicated that knowledge in others yet, in others yet. So that's your hard event based. In your hard game based is being that rules guru. You know, you can go to rulesguru.net, practice all the questions, you can do those things, get really, really good from corner cases to just the most common ones. I mean, both of those are good skills to have, potentially. And this is going to be, I'm called as a judge at this table during this match, right, with this particular tournament. And by the way, might it make sense to know that I'm at a pauper event when I see brainstorm and ponder or whatever, uh, versus that I'm at a modern event where unfortunately a player is playing with cards that got printed in a modern frame because of eternal masters, right? But that those cards actually aren't legal in that format. So these are the kinds of things that we're doing from the hard skills standpoint. And then within the soft skills, I believe right in the middle, because it's gonna be both for each and every match or game in the event, as well as the overall event, including even registration. Like literally registration when they get out the door is going to be the soft skills of customer service. Within the game-based soft skills as well is are you the team lead? See, because often, and we have right here at this energy event, we're going to have a head judge one day who's the team lead the next. So the team lead for an, a specific game-based experience, that's their role, 
Whereas on another day, it's going to be that head judge role that they're in. You really even could put head judge here, but mainly it's your role. But as it relates to the soft skills, it's do you have the ability to inspire good judging behavior from others? Do you have those abilities to lead people so that they leave the event better than they arrived? Better than they arrived. And then finally, we have the overall event, soft skill, of mentoring one another. Which is another way of making each and every one of us better than we arrived when we showed up to this event. I like to talk about this moment for a moment, this part for a moment. I am a master misspeller. I can misspell words like you've never seen before. And so because of that, I like to pre-authorize people to give me mentorship and feedback, such as if you found spelling errors in these slides. The reason I didn't pre-authorize it this time is I wanted to demonstrate it at this point. But if somebody has seen some of my presentations before, you might have seen me do that. When I am team leading events, or I am participating with other players, I let them know, or I'm sorry, other judges, I let them know that I want mentorship or feedback on these particular subjects and I'm pre-authorizing it. I'll take any feedback you have, but I'm especially interested in this area. In other words, the soft skill of mentorship isn't only giving it, it's getting it. It's getting it too. Mentorship and feedback and all those things are gifts, but they really are two-way gifts. And being a good recipient is equally important as being a good deliverer. As you look at this quadrant system, can you mentally point on the screen where you feel one or more of your strengths are, or where you would really like your brand to be? Um, that's what I want you to think about as we begin to move into the dyads or the triads. So this is your opportunity. This may be where you are, and that's the vision I have for you. This may be where you are, and you need to bring up that next generation. Okay? I don't care which side of this picture you're on, and that's why we're going to break into little groups together, because every one of us can be a mentor to someone else. You only have to be a step ahead to help somebody make the next step. And you always want to remember in a state of humility where you were when you did anything. I'll tell you a story. And I think John Alderford may be the only one who knows this, but you certainly could confirm it. My first Grand Prix event, or Magic Fest event, was Indianapolis some number of years ago. By the end of the um, third round, by, by the time I'd been there about four hours, uh, they had a thing called the Buddy Program. And I'm here to tell you, if it weren't for the Buddy Program, I would not be a judge today. Because by the end of the third hour, I was crying. I didn't know why I was doing any of this. Um, actually, there's uh, one other person who could have confirmed this actually is, is, is uh, Baldy. But Baldy is, is somewhere at the moment and not here. But I had an interaction. I didn't, I've never done this before. Somebody came up to me after time was called for deck list and they gave me a deck list. It was a sealed event. Do you remember this by any chance? Not this, tell me if it comes back to you. So I get this deck list, brand new, brand new judge, first time at a Grand Prix. And I heard over the announcements, I heard, hi, I'm John Alderfer, I'm your head judge for this event. And I go, okay, I know where I'm going to take this sheet of paper. And I come up to John and I say, I don't know if you're the right person for this, but this is a deck list for your event. John also did not know this was my first event. <laughs> and, and John was sort of like, well, I guess I can take that. Because you know what I didn't know? I didn't know about teams. I didn't know about teams. I didn't know there was a deck check team. All I knew is this person was on an announcement as the head judge. This person's got to be important. They're going to want this deck list. Right? I give this deck list. It was not the most pleasant first encounter I had with John. It just was not. And it was no fault of John, right? It was, it was a circumstance that got created. Let me tell you another thing that happened. How many people have ever gone to an event and it starts with a team meeting with your team leads and you break up and all that? I go to the place. It's on, it's on, it's on my email, right? I go to the place. 
I'm walking around. I don't see anyone that I recognize because it's my first event. What happened is the sides team needed to get started early. So they left the team meeting area. So not finding anybody and thinking this team meeting seems important, I just found a place to sit for the team meeting while my team was out there working because they were needed. Now, well, after the team meeting, I kind of go out and I find somebody. And their first comment was, oh, Mark, so kind of you to join us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, I, I didn't understand the communication systems to catch that new message. But it's also my first time. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. So this is what. And then the final thing that happened that day is I I was so nervous. I they were ruling. I immediately knew it was wrong, and I didn't know I could change it. So I said, "You should appeal." <laughs> I go get the appeal judge. The appeal judge comes back, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm even saying to them, yeah, I did this thing, I did it wrong, Here's who, we need to fix it, da, 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 da. And then at the end, the judge is like, well, why didn't you just fix it? I didn't know I could do that. I thought I gave a ruling. And now it was up to the process to fix it. And, uh, and, and now that Bald is back, I'll share that last part. So now after having had these series of experiences within the first three hours of my first Magic Fest event, I get asked by another judge a clarifying question on a trigger with uh, with that merfolk that you can sack it and you make a target spell cost one more, it gets countered? Curse catcher. Curse catcher, exactly. I was asked, well, can this player just sack it for no reason at all? And I'm like, oh, I don't know anything anymore. I'm so scared. Let's ask Baldy. Baldy seems like Baldy knows stuff. So I asked Baldy, and Baldy confirmed what we thought, which is, you know, you really can't target something that's not a legal target, right? So you don't just have permission to sack this curse catcher. And then you know what happened when I went to lunch? I got visited by my team lead, told that I was, we were asked, why do we have L1 judges who don't know how triggers work? Uh, what? <laughs> that was the experience. Now look, I'm not saying how it was said, I'm just saying how it was delivered and received, right? Like, I was in such a state that it might have been much more gentle than that, but that's all I heard, okay? That was my first experience. But I'm here to say that I am here because of the Judge Buddy program. Uh, um, Mr. Leonard, Mr. Brian Leonard was my Judge Buddy at that event. And, you know, most importantly, just let me cry. <laughs> like, that was, like, like, we have some spaces where, you know, people aren't allowed to or let, allowed you know, to communicate that way. So I'm very, very deeply thankful for that. And that's why... Before we break together, I want to talk about rocks and reaches. It's one thing to know what to do, and it's another thing of knowing how to do it, right? Those are distinctions. I learned that at that event. <laughs> there were things that I, I knew to do, but I didn't know how to do it, and there were things I didn't know how to do that I was supposed to do. And then, we have rocks. Anyone remember the rock monster from Never Ending Story? Absolutely. So rocks are a concept, yes. Rocks are a concept in judging. These are people who are solid at a skill. They can be relied upon. When you're thinking about who do I want to delegate to, you're thinking, who are my rocks? But here's the thing, and I, 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 know, I know too much, so I don't want to say too much because I don't want to steal part of Olivia's <laughs> presentation here. But you don't get only rocks because you also need people who are here to learn the thing. You also need reaches. And it's for a number of reasons why I will only say one, Libby. I have to say, has anyone noticed that there are some people who used to be judges four years ago, three years ago, even two years ago that are not here? And how many know some skilled judges that are not here today? See, that's a deficit. We've, we've lost a treasure. And if we didn't practice this at all, we would have no way to replace that loss. And I'm not saying that actual people are replaceable. I'm saying the skill set gets replaced, right? The skill sets get replaced. And we do that through this process. You want to have rocks who are solid at something, and you want to have reaches, people you can reach out to and can come up to another level by the end of an experience, by the end of a training, by the end of a piece. And then finally, this is the virtuous cycle. We put in effort, we have a success. Success gives us confidence. 
We gain confidence from the success, which encourages us to put in more effort, and we get bigger successes. This is one of the things that I really like to start each day with, is what is something I'm really going to focus on getting right today at this event, at energy tomorrow, at energy on Sunday. What is one thing I can do? Have that success. And then reach a little higher. Put, set that standard just a little bit higher. And before you know it, you're doing things that you admire to others. So, now it's your time. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get it twisted. And I want everyone to say in this room, I want to rock! One, two, three. I want to rock! Excellent. So, if I could have people pair off into twos or threes, whatever works best in this room. What I want you to be able to do is to share with somebody something that you believe you are or wish to be known for in the judge community and something that you would like to be better at. In other words, what is a way in which I, I, I intend to or am I rock and what is a way in which I am looking for a reach from someone else? Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Share something from their experience working in dyads, something that you know, something that came up, maybe what's next for you, something that you heard that was uh, encouraging, or something that you heard that was uh, you know lighting that flame. Uh, anyway, Sean? Uh, I, one of the things I brought up is since I had judged the last uh, one of the parts of the last energy event, yes. uh, I realized afterwards and part way into it that uh, I was not as inspirational as I hoped I could have been. I was not as good at uh, public speaking to the team as much as I felt I wanted to be. So that was probably the thing I'm aiming to work on a little more in the future. That's fantastic. And, and by the way, I, I do think that's part of my brand, so I would be happy to visit with you and mentor on that. Libby. It's interesting to hear across, across levels, across yes. experience, People it, it, having the self confidence to do the thing yeah. is continually, I mean, it's, it's always a thing you, people struggle with. No matter where you are, it's, uh, yeah, no matter where you're at, right? It's, it's always, am I good enough for this? Did I just get here by chance? Well, well you know, there's, within, within management, too, there's a thing called the uh, Peter Prison, which says that you are promoted to the level of your incompetence. So the reason people get promoted is because they're doing a good job. They get promoted into a role that may not be the exact same skill set, although usually it's at least based on that skill set. But for example, maybe we go from a person who's great at doing it to a person who now has to delegate. Those aren't the same skills. They're important skills, i.e. you don't want to delegate to somebody who you haven't checked in to make sure they know how to do it. Like, you want to make sure your team members know where to go, <laughs> you know, so they're not caught off guard, those kinds of things. But you're correct. Um, and because of that, because we're constantly elevating, there's that sense that we're always kind of reaches, you know, if we're always kind of reaches, then we aren't rocks, is kind of the mental mindset, which is why I so deeply emphasize we're always both. <laughs> always both in different ways in different times and to different people. Others? <laughs> yes, Joel. So, I, it's a question, I guess, for the panel as well. Mm -hmm. It was in everyone, on everyone's mind, the whole pro tour, back to organized play and stuff. Oh. I, I, I want to, I've, I've just became an L1 mm -hmm. last year, so I've never had to do any comp rules enforcement, never <laughs> played, it, but... I kind of want to reach to try to staff towards a pro tour, but I don't know how or who to ask. I assume with a bunch of the experienced judges here that somebody will have an answer or at least their opinion on it. Sure, absolutely. I think there will be opinions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's, there will be. I don't know if that's like a Judge Academy thing when it comes to if there is going to be we need, you need this to be able to work a pro tour. Well, well if like you remember, if remember our MTR, right? Whose responsibility was staffing? TO. Yeah. So it's going to be ultimately going to be a TO question, right? Yeah. And how many people know, for example, that um, 
if you go to a wizard's website and you click on a button to find a judge, it goes to a broken page? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, that's a clue. That is a clue. It's a clue. Okay. Other comments, questions? <laughs> Experiences? Okay, let's see. Yep, remember that feedback is a gift. And for those who wish to, uh, you can always contact me at markmasonalerts at gmail.com. Uh, this is the email that makes my phone beep, hence the word alerts. <laughs> and and this, is, this is always the best way to reach me. Um, with that, we have 13 or so minutes before the next presentation, but I am finished. And I always like to finish on an uproarious applause, if that's at all possible. <laughs>